My doctor says I have a slip disc. Can you help me? What can I do about it? Well, first of all, we need to understand what a slip disc is. Does a disc really slip? Okay, let's go ahead and take out some of this information here so we can get moving here, so we can get right to work. Uh, let's go ahead and take this picture out. And let's go ahead and take the background out. And let's bring up this picture right here about the disc makeup. Let's look at the disc. Well, in order to know uh, about the disc, let's understand a little bit what the disc is entailed or made up or composed of. There's two things that the discs are made up of. The outside fibers called the annular, uh, called the intervertebral, the annular fibers of the intervertebral disc. The annular fibers is the outside ring, the annular fibers or annulus. The inside of that disc is called the nucleus or the nucleus pulposus. Now, my best analogy is kind of, and I was looking for something here, but I'll explain it to you and you'll understand, is taking a fresh donut, okay? And that donut is filled. Let's say there's no hole in the middle. And inside that donut, there is gel that we say the cream of the donut. Okay, whatever cream you like. If you're chocolate cream, you have vanilla cream, it doesn't matter. So we got cream in the middle of the donut. We have the outside part of the donut. And as that donut sits around, over time, it starts to harden up. And what happens is if there's any force or pressure on that donut, that gel, instead of it pushing on the outside part of the donut, then starts to come out of that donut because the outside part of the donut starts to crack. So what happens to discs, because discs are not very vascular structures, obviously after the age of 18, 21, there's no exact age, but in that area, the discs start losing most of its oxygenation. Uh, and we'd say circulation, and it actually works by diffusion or osmosis. So that's why they say when you hurt yourself, it's always good to have movement in the spine, in the disc, because that helps bring circulation and uh, nutrition and different chemicals inside so it can start to heal and repair and keep the disc healthy. So the bottom line is getting to the question, and I've gotten hundreds of these, hundreds of questions over time, uh, is there really such thing as a disc slipping? Uh, the answer is no. Discs do not slip. There is no such thing as a slip disc. And I'll explain why. If you look at that left part of the intervertebral disc, that discs are, are on the end plates, the end plates of the vertebrae uh, above and below, and they're stuck and they're twi entwined into that end plate. If that disc ever comes out or is, is jarred out, uh, bone goes on bone. So discs are going to slip. They can tear. They can rupture. They can bulge. Uh, they can herniate. Uh, they can, you know, they can be sequestered. They can become extruded. Let's go on a little bit, okay? So we, we have the annular fibers. Wait, before I, I, I move on, very important you understand this. The annular fibrosis, the annular fibrosis, the outer ring, this is the circular exterior. Uh, they are like the concentric sheets of collagen fibers that surround the core. So that means it's kind of like the outside of a golf ball, those fibers around that golf ball, the inside of that golf ball is kind of, you know, imagine something different than the outside fibers. The outside fibers keeps whatever's inside strong. So if those outside fibers get weak, then the inside can actually move or shift, which we don't want it to. Now the inner part is called the inner core, nucleus pulposus, that contains a loose network of fibers suspended in a mucoprotein gel. So we look at the outside collagen fibers. Why is it so important to take collagen in your body? Because you're actually helping the discs. That's one of the reasons. So let's move on to this picture here. And we'll go through these real quick. Let's look at a normal disc right there. You can see the spinal canal. We can see a nerve being compressed on the right side saying a disc protrusion. The inside fibers makes its way through the angular fibrosis, putting pressure on the nerve root, causing irritation on that nerve. This picture here shows us the four stages of disc herniations. This shows us first a disc gets weak, it degenerates, like we talk about the donut, starts to dry out. The inside nucleus pulposus makes its way out, starts to prolapse, putting pressure on the outside. 
uh, as it starts to exclude as it gets worse, uh, making its way outside. And sequestered means it kind of causes a free fragment somewhere along the outside away from that disk. This picture here shows us the different areas of the bulging disk. A little harder for you to read. I know it's small here, but it just shows us similar to what we just saw before, but how it affects the nerve root. So we have the bulging disk. We have the moderate uh, extending disc outwards. We have the disruption of the annular fibrosis, and you can just see it as it gets worse as you look at the different pictures there. This picture here shows us, again, uh, similar to what we just saw, degeneration, prolapse, exclusion, sequestered. Here is another picture here showing a lumbar, lower back disc. We can see the inside gel making its way out to the right, okay, affecting that nerve root. These are pictures you can go back. This will be posted on my channel, by the way. Uh, this is a herniated disc, and we're going to have another program about this. I don't want to say too much, but you can see that this disc is going forward. That generally is not going to cause symptoms. We're going to have another program on that, another chapter. Here is a uh, herniated disc of a MRI of the lower back. Uh, that will show a L5 S1 herniated disc. We can see the normal discs above. You can see the, uh, the spinal canal, uh, just so you can look at that. Here, here's another picture of a bulging disc. This has spinal stenosis, but the, what I want you to look at here, if you look at the normal white appearance inside the disc and the normal white nuclear region versus the black, the black discs means that there is dehydration of that area. That's why drinking water is so important for those people who have discs because hydrating your system is only going to help in the healing and sustaining that disc to become healthier. Here's a picture coming out of the, uh, oops, I don't want to jump too quick. Let's just make sure we got it all here. One second. Uh, here's a picture here just showing how that disc is being affected in the lower neck. Now remember, the nerves that come out of the neck makes its way down the shoulder arm into the hand, tingling, numbness, cramping. It go into the chest area. It can go between the shoulder blades as well. Those nerves can affect other muscles that attach behind the skull, and those nerves can go over the head behind the eyes. Here's another picture here. Uh, let's see if we can get this gone here. Give me a second. Okay, one second. Okay, this picture here. Now, this is the closest thing I wanted to bring out. This is a separate topic. We're going to go into this later in another type of program. But this is called a spondylolisthesis. And many of you people have never heard of this. A spondylolisthesis is when one vertebrae slips on top of the other. If you look at the vertebrae here of that red, that lowest vertebrae there is slipping forward. We call that a spondylolisthesis. This is what we call the pars interarticularis defect. Uh, this usually is something where people have when they're congenitally have these, or you can develop this from an injury. This is the only slippage that we're going to have when we talk about slippage, and we're going to talk about that in another program. Just wanted to share that with you. Uh, here again shows the nerves coming out of the lower neck, how that nerve becomes affected, how it travels into the shoulder, into the arm, down the brachial plexus, and that can cause tingling, numbness, cramping, aching, weakness, and many of those symptoms. This picture right here shows us another view coming out of the neck, shows us looking down on the, on the vertebrae, on the disc, how that nerve can be compressed and how it can cause irritation on that particular uh, nerve root. This picture here shows a little bit more closer in a herniated disc. It shows where that nerve is coming out between the vertebrae. And what happens is when that disc starts to become more compressed through degeneration, we've done uh, many programs on degenerative disc disease. You can check back on my channel, degeneration, de de degenerative disc disease. When that disc gets, gets thinner, that hole that you see where that red is right there, uh, right above it where it says the nerve root inside of the foramen, that foramen gets smaller. So we can't afford to have discs degenerate because even if you don't have a herniated disc, that hole that gets smaller can compress the nerve root and the symptoms can be a lot harder to correct. Here's just showing the nerve roots, uh, how they come out in the lower back, uh, talking about the vertebrae, the facet joints, the ligaments. Uh, this picture here just shows another... Uh, herniated disc, uh, or and a healthy disc, obviously. Uh, it shows a desiccated disc. Again, look at the black versus the white. 
when there's a lot of black, that means that it's desiccated. It means that the disc is not healthy. It's not hydrated with fluid. This picture here shows the sciatic nerve being affected. The sciatic nerve is the fattest, longest nerve of the body, it makes its way out of the buttocks area, makes its way down the leg. Generally affects behind the thigh. Once it gets to the knee, it affects the rest of the leg. It does not affect the front of the thigh. Okay, so people who think that they have sciatica and you're having tingling, weakness, or burning in the front of the thigh, that is the femoral nerve. That is not the sciatic nerve. Sciatic nerve is made, made up of the fourth, fifth lumbar nerve root as well as the first, second, and third uh, sacral nerve roots. It's like five nerve roots that forms into the fattest, longest nerve of the body, the size of your thumb, and it goes all the way down. This picture shows another herniated disc just from an MRI. You can see that's, that's, that's quite bad. Uh, affecting the L4, L5 disc. Here's a picture here showing the vertebral uh, spinal cord, just a little bit of anatomy for you so you can see the disc, where it's at, and a little bit around it. You can come back to that later. And that is it. But I just wanted to go ahead and share those uh, great things with you. I think it's important that you really have a, a good understanding of that. I ask uh, all you people out there, um, if you have not gone through my channel, go through those videos, many, many self-help, hundreds of self-help videos out there. Um, I ask you to uh, subscribe if you haven't, because you will continue to get live feeds like this on a regular basis. I believe that we are the leaders of live feeds, making our way when it comes down to self-help, spinal conditions. I'm trying to make it a habit of this. We get great feedback in the chat room. I want to thank all our chatters out there. And most important, everyone, I wish you many blessings overseas. If you're just tuning in, good morning and good afternoon. And here in the U.S., a little later at night, I want to say blessings to you and your family. Keep up the great work. Stay proactive. And regardless of those problems you have, you're going to fight through this. You're going to get through this. Remember, uh, my fan page on Facebook, Motivational Doc, easiest place to get a hold of me there. I get many emails through, through YouTube. I do my best. So anyways, Motivational Doc on Facebook. And hopefully, most important, you'll continue to learn, keep persevering, stay strong, and get fired up because you're going to get through these problems. God bless everyone.